everybody, it's Monica Weekly. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm super psyched to bring you this very short kind of mindset shift training about the power of strategic questions. And I say mindset training because I can't teach you, nobody can teach you every single question that you need to ask because we're having live interactions with sellers and buyers and potential sellers and buyers. So the idea of this training today is really just to give you a mindset shift about how you're showing up in your client interactions. P.S. This is really cool in every aspect of your life too. I have found that my personal relationships are way better when I'm in question mode, coming from curiosity instead of telling, selling, using words like you should. I want us all to agree today. We are never going to say you should again. We're not going to should on anybody. Okay. We're going to quit that. Um, it is not very powerful. If you're trying to influence, whether it be a, a friend or family member or a client, if you're trying to influence, it is important to understand that that influence is way more powerful when they self-discover it. And the way you help them self-discover is through the power of strategic questions. And look, not all of us are going to be great at questions right out of the gate. I'm going to be here to tell you the only reason I'm teaching this class is because I was horrible. I mean, absolutely horrible at it. In fact, at a coaching retreat, my coach called me out in front of the entire group because all I wanted to do was respond with answers and tell. And I was trying to be a coach. And that's just no way to affect change in people and to influence people. So my hope for you today is that at the end of this short training, that you will simply walk away with a just a different frame of mind. Now, we have to be super um, aware of this before we enter into a conversation because our default default is just to give answers. We think that's that's how we impress people. That's that's how we show our knowledge. Look, we were raised as kids never to question anybody, weren't we? Oh, don't question authority. Don't question. No more questions. Stop asking questions. And I'm here to tell you that that programming is not serving you. You're not asking enough questions. You're not consulting enough. You're worried about the right answers and showing how much you know and uh, it's just, it's not the way to do what you're trying to do, which is to create a business of consulting and solving problems and, and helping people recognize the path that's best for them. Look, the reality is we don't sell anything, do we? I mean, we call it selling houses, but you're not selling anybody a house. You're guiding them through this process and keeping them safe. Well, in order to do that, we need to understand some things. And the only way to understand is to ask questions. Uh, a mentor of mine once said, in any interaction, I want you guys to write this down. In any interaction, whether it be business or personal, the person who talks the most thinks it went the best. And the person who asked the questions was in charge. Okay? In any interaction, personal or business, the person who talked the most thinks it went the best. And the person who asked the questions was in charge. I want you to be in charge all the time. And that means you're going to stop answering questions on the first question. We're going to get into this mode and it takes practice, guys. I get it. We're going to get into this mode of asking a clarifying question every single time you're asked a question. That's going to take some practice. Trust me. I want to give you a story uh, that I think will uh, drive this point home a little bit. I have a friend, her name's Mitzi, and she was in, she tells a story of being in an, an elevator, a really tall building, an elevator at some event. And she got up uh, in the elevator up, up high and uh, a gentleman was on, on the elevator already. And she said to hello and they began a conversation and she just asked him questions. And as the elevator dropped down and people got on and off, they continued this conversation and she's great at asking questions. She's a former coach and actually still coaches. And uh, she was just asking him all kinds of questions and she found out all these things about him. And when the elevator dropped 
to the bottom floor and the doors open and everybody got off. He said, hey, tell me your name again. And she said, my name's Mitzi. He says, well, you are one of the most interesting people I've talked to in a while. <laughs> she didn't say anything about herself. All she did was ask him questions. And his perception of her was how interesting she was. Yes, you know this to be true. And yet we still want to just dump all over people, all of our information. And, and some of us are even nervous about going on appointments because we don't know what to say. What if they ask us something we don't know? All those things. Well, I'm here to kind of relieve that a little bit today. I want to share with you, I'm, I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm a real estate agent just like you. have been selling for over 20 years. I also coach and train agents all around the country. And I'm super happy to be uh, affiliated with EXP and all the incredible, incredible things that are going on here. And our leadership team, especially Glenn, I mean, this is amazing. So a long time ago, I was actually consulting with a buyer who came to me and we were going through the buyer consultation uh, process, which I hope each and every one of you is doing no matter what. There's not a single exception to that. And a buyer consultation is a series of, questions, series of questions, right? So I was going through that process and we were to the part where you ask about beds and baths and what's important, what's the minimum kind of situation there. And the person said, oh, and I need a formal dining room. Okay, now nine out of 10, maybe 10 out of 10 agents is just gonna write that down, formal dining room. And if your MLS allows it, you would go ahead and check that box. But I want you to take this example to heart because I stopped right there and said, awesome, tell me more about that. That's the question. It's not even a question, is it? This is a statement. Awesome, tell me more about that. It's a clarifying statement, if you will. So this particular client says, uh, I do family dinners every single week. My whole family comes over and it's super important that we all can sit around the same table. This is something that we like and is important to us. I said, oh my gosh, that's so cool. How, how, how big is your family? Tell me how long you've been doing this. And everybody lives here. And it gave me a minute to like get to know them a little better through questions. So I kind of had the dynamics in my mind. And I said to her, so if this home had space to extend a table or have a big table, but it wasn't in a formal dining room setting. Is that okay? Or does it need to be a formal dining room setting? And she says, oh my gosh, no, we just need a place where we can all sit around the table. Okay, so can you imagine if I hadn't asked those questions and all I did was put in a formal dining room as a criteria in the MLS search, can you imagine how many houses we may have missed out on that would have otherwise maybe been perfect for her? So it's our job to dig a little on these basic criteria, even beds and baths. Tell me why that's important to you. Tell me why that's important to you. Tell me a little bit more about that, right? Because they don't maybe understand the implications of putting in too many you know, criterion points and then eliminating some houses that would otherwise be perfect, okay? So questions are really the only way to discover the real problem, the real concern, or the real priority. Write those three down. Problem, concern, or priority. Questions are really the only way to discover the real concern, the real problem, the real priority. And addressing those problems, concerns, and priorities are the, is the only way for you to be successful with the client. It's the only way for you to succeed, to influence, and to win them over, solve the problem, and then to get all the referrals that you need from that client forever because you were the problem solver and the hero uh, of the story, right? All right. So I want to dive into just a few samples of questions. Hopefully you understand why questions are so important. And the homework that you have is to every time now somebody asks you a question, I don't care if it's at your house, out to dinner with friends, or in a client scenario, every time somebody asks you a question, I want you to refrain from answering it and ask a clarifying question. Okay? Now, obviously, there's some exceptions to that. All right. If somebody needs to know where the bathroom is, you don't need to clarify. Just tell them where the bathroom is. Right. 
All right. So I'm going to just pull up. You're not going to see it, but I just want to make sure I get my notes right here. Um, I'm going to pull up the top four buyer questions that I like that are unique a little bit. Of course, there are standard questions and you know what they are. I just want you to worry about going one or two or even three levels deep on your question. Well, tell me about, tell me more about that. Gosh, I'd love to understand why that's so important to you. Did you have an experience somewhere else where that was important to you? Those kinds of things. Uh, those are obviously basic questions. They're basic consulting questions. But here are four questions that I've found to be really enlightening and to open up great conversation and great trust. And these four are with a buyer, okay? The first one is sort of what we already talked about. Ooh, I love that. Would you mind sharing with me why that's important to you? And you're going to go two or three times deep with that, all right? Uh, they tell you something they want or something they hope for. Oh my gosh, I love that. Tell me, would you mind sharing why that's important to you? Okay. Now this next one is one of my favorite all-time buyer questions. It actually works for sellers too. And that is this, how do you make decisions? Tell me, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, individually, how do each of you make decisions? And I'll usually prompt them with, are you a gut feel kind of gal or are you an analyzer? Are we going to have to put spreadsheets together for you and have square footage analysis? Or are you just going to know the house when you see it? And usually the couple laughs at each other, right? Because there's always one gut feel person. And then there's always one, uh, you know, over analyzer. Got to put the, the spreadsheet together. But that question alone, and we'll try that down. How do you make decisions? Man, does it open up conversation? Because if you're in a segment of the market where we're still having a lot of competition and we're in multiple offers, do we need to talk about the fact that there's not going to be any time to put this spreadsheet together? And sometimes numbers aren't going to make sense in this market. Yes, we're going to need to have that conversation up front. Super important. Super important in setting expectations. And that's part of what asking the right questions are is so that you can understand where they're coming from so that you can massage that information and set the expectation. And we as agents just aren't doing a good job of this. We take things so literal and beds and baths and square footage and I want to see this house and okay, I'll meet you and that's it. And then we wonder why our lives are so difficult in the middle of the deal. We didn't establish ourselves as a leader. We didn't establish a process. We didn't care to dive deeper into their concerns, problems, um, et cetera, right? So really important. So number three, my favorite buyer question is, if we were to find a house that was otherwise perfect, but it didn't have X, like whatever they're talking about, it didn't have a fenced in yard, would you still buy it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a way that you can eliminate putting that criteria into the MLS, which then, of course, casts a bigger net. I want as little information in the MLS as possible for their search so that the net that we cast is bigger and that they have more to say no to. If you put in beds, baths, price point, has to have a flat backyard with a fence yard and it must have a this basement and this, you know, you're really going to eliminate a lot of things that we know they probably would buy anyway. So the question is, if we were to find the perfect house that was otherwise perfect, but didn't have that fenced yard or that finished basement, would you still be willing to look at it? Nine times out of 10, it's, yeah, we could always finish the basement. If it had everything else, yeah, sure, we could finish the basement. Oh, yeah. If it had everything else, sure, we could add a garage out back. Whatever. Okay? Really important to clarify that. Now, the fourth question for the buyers that I love is on a scale of 1 to 10, how motivated are you to buy a home in the next 60 days? 10 is, I have to buy a home. There is no option. I must buy a home in the next 60 days. That's a 10. All right. I love on a scale of one to 10 questions. I ask them all the time. They're very, uh, they actually prompt nice discussions because you can clarify the number. So on a scale of one to 10, how motivated are you to buy a home in the next 60 days? 10 mean you have to, there is no option. And listen to what they say. They'll say, oh, probably an eight. I mean, we really want to, but we don't have to. Okay, great. What would, what would prevent you from buying a home? What would happen where that wouldn't happen? 
Um, and also you can make sure both parties, if there are two decision makers, are on the same page. I can't tell you how many times uh, I ask them to actually hold up the numbers behind their back and so that they both show them at the same time. And, you know, one partner is a three and the other one's a nine. And we need to have that discussion right now. And sometimes I'll just send them off to have that discussion that night. Hey, guys, we got to both be on the same page. As you can imagine, this uh, process will be uh, a little difficult if one partner is not on board, which I totally respect, full respect on that, right? Okay, so those are the four buyer questions. You know, would you mind sharing with me why that's important? How do you make decisions? If we were to find a house that was otherwise perfect but didn't have X, would you still be willing to buy it? And on a scale of one to 10, how motivated are you to move, make a move in the next 60 days? See, I have a standard in my business right now is we're not working with buyers that aren't an eight, nine, or 10. We're just not, it's too difficult. So you have to have standards in your business. And these questions help to reveal whether the client is right for your business. Okay, make sense? All right, now let's talk about the top four seller questions. Top four seller questions. These are, these are good, I like these. All right, here's another scale of one to 10 question. Number one, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being HGTV perfect or architectural digest perfect, how would you rate your home? Then listen, because what, and this is generally a pre-qualification question. This isn't being asked at the kitchen table. This is being asked as you're doing your research, getting ready to come over to the appointment. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being HGTV perfect, how would you rate your home? Now, what the seller is going to sit there and tell you is everything that they think is wrong with the house. And this is going to become so valuable because you're going to reference that list that they said, not you. All right. And there's a follow-up question, which is what would it take to make it a 10? And they're also going to describe everything that they think that is less than or subpar really powerful question. You must be asking this question as a pre-qualification to the, to the meeting. Okay. Number two, how honest would you like me to be with you through this process? Yeah. Sounds weird, right? How honest would you like me to be with you through this process? Now we all know they're going to say, Oh my gosh, we want you to be totally honest. They're going to laugh and there'll be some kind of joke around this and it's fine. It'll break the ice a little bit. But I always ask this question because I want to reference back to their answer. Hey, earlier you mentioned that you really wanted me, me to be fully honest with you. Would you mind if I was honest with you about something that we're talking about? Okay. You're just getting permission to be honest. And that's really important. All right. Number three, what is it, if anything, about moving stresses you out the most? All right, this is where you're going to separate yourself from other agents that are just doing the tactile motions, right? This is where you become a human being. And this is where you can take extra care of your clients. And this is where you can stand out. And that human being aspect of real estate is what makes the difference, doesn't it? And I bet most everybody watching this wants to show up that authentically and that organically and, and that you understand that being a human being first, realtor second, is what actually makes for a great business. That's what makes for a great business. So what, if anything, about moving stresses you out the most and just listen to them and listen to each of them and ask clarifying questions. Oh, really? Tell me about that. Sounds like maybe you had an experience with that last time. Have you, have you had that experience before or? Sounds like that's coming from a story or, you know, sounds like there's a story there or whatever, right? Okay. What concerns you the most? What confuses you the most? You don't have to say stresses out. What if anything stresses you out, concerns you, or confuses you the most about this idea of a move? And you're going to find out all their little vulnerable spots and you're going to be able to take care of that or watch out for that. Okay. Very important. The fourth seller question that I love to ask is on a scale of one to 10, how motivated are you to sell your home here? We got to, we got to know motivation again. All right. 
10 being, I have to sell this home, I have no option. So it's the same as the buyer question, but scale of one to 10, 10 being, we must sell. How motivated are you to sell? Got to ask these questions. And guys, there's probably you know, 50, 100 other questions like this. These questions are meant to get your brain like thinking like this a little differently. Look for these opportunities to ask clarify, clarifying questions or come from curiosity. That's really what we're doing. When you can solve their problem, you will earn the business. But you can't solve the problem unless you understand three levels deep what the problem is. Three levels deep. See, you just want to answer the first question that comes your way. Hey, will you reduce your commission? And you just want to answer it. I want you to ask, tell me uh, why that's important to you. Tell me more about that. Sounds like you've talked to somebody about commission rates. Help me understand that a little bit more. Are you really interested in what I make? Or is it more about you uh, capturing and earning the most amount of money and getting the most equity out of your house? Is that really what it's about? Yeah, of course, that's what it's about. Not about what I keep. They're asking that question because they want to make the most amount of money. We'll solve that problem for you and they'll never ask you about your commission. Solve that problem for them. Okay. I'm good. All right. The last set of questions and then we're going to end today. Uh, these are just general questions that I like, that I've asked over time, that have really given me great responses and important information. Um, they can be asked generally of anyone, uh, although this first one has to do more with sellers. The first question is, all right, guys, you're at the kitchen table. Let's say they're downsizing, right? Do you have a favorite memory or two? of this house, your time in this house. Gosh, you raised your kids in this house. Do you have a favorite memory in this house? Ooh, human being stuff, red alert. You're not the average agent, right? You have a favorite memory. What that question does for me, first of all, allows me to show up like a human being, like I want to, but also it gives me a great like gifting, thoughtful gifting opportunity. They're like, oh my gosh, yeah, you know, our kids, we always used to do dance party Sundays and we put on music and dance and oh man, am I going to, I don't know, gift something around that, some sort of disco ball or maybe just a little ornament that's a disco ball that they can hang on their tree in their condo that they're downsizing to, right? Or maybe they they have a great card tournaments at their house. Oh my gosh, we used to play cards all the time, whatever. So I'm going to go get a picture of their family or a picture of the house and put it on a deck of cards and give them a custom deck of cards for that. So great opportunity to do thoughtful gifting and just human being stuff in that question. The second question is, is there any part of this move that's creating more stress or concern than others? That's similar to the other question, but that can be asked of buyers too. Hey, is there any part of this process that's giving you, you know, more concern or more stress than others? I, you got, you really just want them to open up because if you're not aware of what's going on underneath the surface, you can't really be that full blown consultant, that partner in the process. Partners know everything that's going on with them as much as they'll let you in, obviously. Okay, the third question, I love this question. I love this question. How does somebody win with you or how does somebody lose with you? I love asking my clients this. Hey, I really appreciate this opportunity. I love your house. Your house is amazing. I would be honored to help you get this house sold. Before we make a decision, I'd like to know from you, how does somebody win with you? What does that look like? And contrary to that, how does somebody lose with you? When you can understand that about somebody, does it help navigate the process a little bit? Yes, because you know what's sensitive to them. But what might be important to me is not important to somebody else. And what you know causes you to lose with me might not cause you to lose with somebody else. You've got to understand this. You're serving them at the highest level in a big, giant uh, investment. This is important. This is important. Our work is important. All right. So I want us to show up not as order takers. I want us to show up as like the best doctor you've ever had, the best attorney you've ever had. And what doctors and attorneys do best is ask great questions and consult and come from curiosity and understand three levels deep. Okay. The fourth question, the last question today is what, hey, oh, this is a good one, guys. You're going to want to write this down. What makes this experience a 10 out of 10 for you? 
what makes this, we're all done, everything's good, what makes this experience a 10 out of 10? Let them talk, all right? And then I want you to say something to the effect of this. Is it okay if I check in with you throughout the process to make sure I'm hitting that 10? And if I'm able to hit that number along the way, would you be excited about referring me to your friends and family? What? How good is that? All right, let me ask it again. Hey, what makes this experience a 10 out of 10 for you? Let me know. How do we knock it out of the park for you? Let them talk. All right, great. Is it okay with you if I periodically check in with you throughout the process? And if I'm able to hit a 10 all along the way, would you be excited about referring me to your friends and family? You're going to get a confirmation from them. And that's where an obligation becomes concrete. Now they've, now they're obligated to, they said they would. And as long as you deliver on your 10 out of 10, you will find yourself accruing uh, referrals very easily. Imagine hitting a 10 out of 10 for, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 homes that you sell in a year. And you have that discussion with each of them. That's good for a referral, two, three, four, perhaps, right? More maybe. Okay, that is the power of strategic questions. Are you thinking differently? Are you looking back on how you interact with sellers and buyers and saying, oh, I think I talk too much. I'm not asking clarifying questions. I'm not showing up like a consultant. I don't really understand what's going on underneath the surface with my clients. I'm just doing the job, right? I hope you got that out of today. If you ever want to ask any other questions, you can always reach out to me on Workplace or I'm on Facebook and happy to help anytime. Thank you so much.